Welcome to the Young Learners webinar. Um, we have been running these webinars for a while. We've had very positive feedback in the past and we know you all appreciate them. So we thought we'd host one again for the 2023 uh, Young Learner courses. What we'll do is I'll start off by passing over to Mark Rendell, who's our CEO. He'll say a few words and then we will um, go ahead and start with this. Over to you, Mark. Thank you very much, Shima. And uh, wonderful, well, I can't see you all, but wonderful that you've all attended today. And uh, it's a great pleasure to be able to uh, talk to you. And also, I've just been checking um, where you're all from. We have very, very, very interesting and diverse uh, range of destinations with us. Um, International House London, I'm glad to say, has come through the pandemic quite strongly. We're recovering well, and I do hope that your organisations are recovering well as well, and we're looking forward to a strong 2023. Certainly the school is uh, really quite vibrant, and I know that uh, we've already had quite strong interest in our summer programme for young learners as well. Uh, you will notice a few um, significant changes this year with our young learner programme, and um, I'm sure Fizzy and Shima are going to tell you all about it. But um, uh, the first of the major changes is on the personnel front. Uh, we have Olivia and Diana who are continuing with us from last summer and uh, they are real assets uh, and did a, did a really good job. And they have been joined by Fizzy who is leading the programme and uh, we're just about to announce a new operations manager as well. So Fizzy is a very experienced and uh, loyal servant to International House. Um, she was based in, in Madrid for many years. She's been a centre manager at Ellesmere on one of our programmes and she successfully led our Modern Languages programme uh, for about three years now, two, just over two years, so uh, has a fantastic track record and I know that the Young Learner programme is in very, very safe hands uh, with Fizzy and her, her very capable team. Uh, the second major change, and you're going to hear all about this, is that we have refreshed our, opposite, our offering and uh, repositioned our centres and I think that we have a very strong um, offer now with Frensham, Oxford and Cambridge, a new centre in Cambridge, which I'm sure you're going to hear all about. Uh, I'm, we're actually visiting today, but um, it, it is really exciting. It's based in Cambridge University, so a fantastic opportunity to actually go to a, a college at, Ox, at uh, Cambridge University. It's also um, a women's college, although the college will not be used only for women in the in the summer, but it is a women's college, so it's quite unique and it has the largest uh, display of women's art uh, in the world as well. So uh, lots of really, really exciting um, features. Uh, so I think we've got um, Frensham, Oxford, Cambridge, fantastic names, should be quite easy for you and well known um, for, by your students and uh, attractive places to, to visit in the summer. We've got now um, a good team in place, a good preparation window. We're approaching 2023 with a year under our belt and staff with uh, a year's more experience than they had last year. So full of optimism and uh, really, really looking forward to working with you um, over the summer. Um, thank you very much for attending and I shall hand back to Shima and enjoy the rest of the webinar. Thank you, Mark. Um, so yeah, Mark's obviously introduced the Young Learners team to you guys already, which is headed by Fizzy, who you all probably know from IH Madrid or Ellesmere back in 2019 as well. Um, and then Fizzy will introduce her and talk about her team a bit later on. So we'll start with um, uh, talking about obviously the three main locations. So for 2023, a lot of you obviously have worked with us over many years now. So you're very already familiar with Oxford St. Edward's Boarding School. Um, we finally ran our Frencham Heights. Um, so we ran Frencham last summer, so 2022. Um, it was very successful and it's basically located in Surrey, which is approximately one hour from London. Um, and that's where we have our we can welcome our younger kids as well, who are aged eight to 11. And then, as Mark mentioned, our new um, centre for 2023 is Cambridge. So we're using University of Cambridge, Murray Edwards College. So if we move on to the next slide, please. Um, I think one of the main changes which we probably need to talk about is the 
names of the courses. So we have changed these slightly. Um, you know, I know a lot of you have worked with us over several years, so you're used to English class active English, but for 2023, we've made it easier and we've put it in line with um, to make it easier for you guys and for your clients as well. So if I just go through the previous names are on the left, we've got the current course names in the middle. So you guys know what the new names are and what the previous courses that we were offering were. So we still have Discover English, um, which we used to run for eight to 11 year olds. And we've actually changed that now. So we've called it Discover English Junior. That's just to differentiate the age ranges. So obviously with Discover English, we do run the course for eight to 11 year olds. And then we have just a Discover English, which is for the 12 to 17 year olds. Um, on the right, side you can see which centers the courses are available at so for discover english junior it's just frencham because that's where we can have eight to eleven year olds and with discover english for the 12 to 17 year olds that will be held in frencham and in cambridge then we move on to what was formerly known as english plus is now your intensive english course so you still have the 15 hours of english with the six hours of uh, exam preparation for that that course will be held in oxford frencham and cambridge and then what we formerly um, used to call active English is now your English plus. So it makes a lot, I think it makes more sense because it's English classes plus a professional coached activity. So um, yeah, hopefully that's clear. Um, that course will be held in Oxford and in Frencham. And then we will continue our future leaders programs, which are for ages 14 to 17. So um, we're running our entrepreneurship and world leaders themes. Um, we've been running these for several years now and they're very successful. So on the back of those, we've now introduced two new themes, young MBA and university preparation. And what better place to hold it than Cam University of Cambridge. And my colleague Diana will speak about those in more detail as we go on. Um, so if we move on now to the next slide, please. So here's just a quick uh, recap of the courses, the age ranges again. So Discover English is for 12 to 17 year olds. English Plus, which is formerly known as Active English is for 12 to 17. Intensive English is your 12 to 17 year old exam preparation course. So they do have to have a minimum B1 level to be able to join. And then we've got our future leaders courses, um, which are for ages 14 to 17 year old, and there will be a minimum B2 level required for students to be able to join those courses. So um, with the Discover English courses and all the other English courses, of course, they have 15 hours of English classes in the morning um, and then they do um, afternoon activities. Discover English is held in Frencham and in Cambridge. So in the afternoon, they'll do activities on site, which will be led by activity leaders. In the evening, we have further activities for students to be able to interact, make new friends, you know, just to be able to practice their English as well. They do still have one full day and one half day excursion um, a week as well. So English Plus, which was formerly known as Active English, and um, of course they have 15 hours of English classes in the morning. They do six hours of a professional coached activity in the afternoon. Um, we do request that the students select the activities before they join. But of course, if they do forget to, then when they come upon arrival, they will be um, asked which option they would like to um, enroll in and they will be enrolled on those. They again have further evening activities and they also still have one full day excursion and one half day excursion um, a week as well. So intensive English is what was formerly known as English Plus. So this course, they do 15 hours of general English classes in the morning. And then whilst the English Plus students do the professional coached activity, the intensive English students will have six hours of um, exam preparation. So in the intensive English course, they do still leave with an actual qualification. They get to do a speaking exam at the end. So they would do six hours of exam preparation for that. And then they'll join the other students and do evening activities and still have that four day excursion and one half day excursion a week, which Olivia will talk about um, as we go on a bit further down. So I'm going to pass over to Diana, who's going to speak to you guys in more detail about the Future Leaders Programme now. Thank you. I'm on mute, of course. Uh, well, thank you, Shima, for that. Um, we are very proud to introduce Young MBA and pre-university future leaders courses uh, this year. And as she said, um, what better location than Cambridge uh, for that? So what is uh, Young MBA? Young MBA is a taster of what an MBA course will be like uh, for a young student. Of course, 
uh, it will be adapted to our to the age of the students we are dealing with 14 to 17 years old and to their level of English. But hopefully they will be able to explore or have a taster of certain subjects that they would explore if they chose to study an MBA in the UK. For example, they will talk about marketing strategy, strategic thinking, public speaking, digital literacies. Uh, they will also develop their own business plan. It's a very structured program in the sense that all the input sessions that they have through the week will work towards a project at the end. And it's generally going to be a business pro, uh, plan together with a pitch, um, which will be assessed by a panel of judges as we usually do, do in our future leaders courses. Uh, of course, we will have guest speakers, which are one of the highlights of our future leaders courses. We'll have um, uh, input from marketing experts, also team leader experts. Last year, we had some uh, very good um, speakers from um, organizations like the Equality Trust, which hopefully give them a little bit more insight in not just the formal aspects of, of entrepreneurship and uh, an MBA, but also give them a, a better perspective of the world of business of, of today. So that is in a nutshell, um, young MBA for, for our students. Uh, we will also have uh, the university preparation. And this course has been thought for students to, again, have a taste uh, of what studying in a UK university is like. They are going to be introduced to um, what tutorials are like, what seminars are like, what lectures are like. They're gonna, we're going to help them develop some skills for that as well, some note-taking skills, as, long as, uh, or as well as problem solving and critical thinking, some essay writing and some study techniques as well. It's a very packed program, but hopefully students will benefit from it and will get a, a real idea of what it is to what it's like to, to study uh, in the UK. And that's why they will be taking this course, as well as the input they will be receiving from the excursions and everything that surrounds the program, because we cannot forget it's not just about the academic input, but also what they get from excursions, from their other colleagues, and from mixing up with our students, international students, which also replicates what will happen in a UK university. So that is more or less what's happening in our two new courses. And we highly emphasize this idea of a B1, a B2 level of English when they join, uh, especially because our courses have been designed for students that have a level of English that can communicate through and the, the English will not be an impediment for them to participate in such content-rich uh, lessons or input lessons that they will have. Of course, we'll have um, guest speakers. Uh, we'll have students as guest speakers as well, international students coming to explain a little bit more what um, studying in the UK is. So it will be a well-rounded experience for them to in two weeks, experience a little bit of what their life in the UK will be like if they decided to join us as uh, international students. So thank you for that. And I'm passing on to Shima again. Thank you. Um, so yes, Cambridge is our new centre for 2023. We're really excited about that. I think it's a good location to add along with Oxford and Frencham. Um, we are um, as Mark mentioned earlier, we are based in Murray Edwards College, which is part of the University of Cambridge, which is obviously a key selling point for yourselves. Um, it is a 15 minute walk to the Cambridge city centre. So it's within, um, you know, reach of that. So uh, the program that we've designed in Cambridge, they will have uh, two to three half day excursions a week rather than just one full day and one half day excursion a week. It is close, um, about 90 minutes from Heathrow Airport. So again, we will be offering the shared airport transfer services from London Heathrow as well. Um, if we move on, they've got modern classrooms. Um, you know, as Mark mentioned, they have got exceptional uh, collection of art that they've displayed as well. Um, we will be sharing Cambridge with another um, school as well. But of course, the two schools, we will be set running our um, courses completely separate to one another. If we move on, we 
do have, I think one of the key selling points for Cambridge is we do have twin and single ensuite rooms only for this year. So um, if you have any clients who you know are a little fussy, who probably don't want to have the typical British boarding accommodation, then they're more than welcome to join our Cambridge Centre, um, where we will be placing them in twin or single ensuite rooms as well. And there will be separate sleeping facilities for boys and girls, as we do in all our centres. So um, a lot of you obviously are already familiar with Oxford St Edward's Boarding School. It's about 20 minutes from Oxford City Centre. I'm not going to go over Oxford too much um, and Frensham as well, but we will be sharing these slides with you at the end um, of this webinar. So, um, you know, you guys are more than welcome to go over these. And then I just wanted to also add, please feel free to continue um, and type in your questions. So at the end, we will have a Q&A part as well. So um, if you have any, you know, questions, we'll be more than happy to answer those at the end. So if we just move on, sorry, then. Um, so yeah, we've got the range courses there. Frencham, of course, they have exceptional facilities. Frencham is like Cambridge. It's one of our smaller centres. So we have approximately 150 beds a week, whereas Oxford is a much bigger centre. We can go up to 450 students a week as well. So I'm going to pass over to Fizzy now, and she's going to talk a bit more about the operational side of things and about the young learner team and the structure as well. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, great to see so many of you here. Some names I recognise, so that's wonderful. Lovely to see you. We're going to start off the slides that we're going to cover um, from the head office team here, Deanna and, and Olivia as well. We'll cover more of the sort of student journey from them arriving. But before we start off, I just wanted to yet again reiterate um, who we are. The head office team, you'll see our pictures there in front of you. Um, so as Shima and Mark said, I'm heading the, the, the Young Learner Department. Um, Deanna and Olivia, who are here with me today, Deanna is our academic manager um, and um, Olivia is the operations exec. And both of them have a lot of experience. They were working last summer, they did excellent work. You probably will have been in touch with either of them perhaps last summer. So we're continuing on the success, their successes this summer. Um, we have just, as Mark mentioned, appointed a new operations manager who is Anya O'Sullivan. She's not actually with us today because she doesn't start until Monday. Um, but you can see her picture there. Some of you will know her actually because she's worked in the centres. She's worked in Oxford as the academic manager and also she was the assistant centre manager last year in Oxford so she she comes to us with loads of experience hands-on experience as well um, from the operational side and we're really excited to have her on the team and I think she's actually quite excited to join but well, I hope she is in fact I know she is because I spoke to her this morning um, and she's coming with lots of ideas lots of energy and with a wealth of experience um, just you'll see from the structure there, I've just put in a sample of the what the centre staff could look like in one of our centres, just to give you an idea what we'll have. Um, so we will have the centre manager, as you know, who is the head of the senior management team in the centre. Then we have a welfare manager an activity manager and also the director of studies. So they make up the senior management team of the center. Below our, our welfare manager, we will have welfare leaders and also house supervisors. So the house supervisors will be in the houses. Their main duty is the welfare of the students. So to make sure that they're, well, when they're in the house, everything that's um, the pastoral care for, for the students. Activities manager will be in charge of the, act, the activity leaders who will be leading activities in the afternoon and also excursions, the half day and the full day excursions. Um, then we have the director of studies who, depending on the centre, will have an, an assistant director of studies and also a senior teacher or a senior teacher. Um, and then we will also, for the, the centres Cambridge and Oxford who have the future leaders, for future leaders coordinator and then our teachers the future leader teachers who are specifically trained to teach those courses and then 
our English teachers who will be teaching the other courses. Um, we will also have a centre admin, which they will be the person who will be supporting the, the senior management team, but mostly the centre manager. And perhaps you will be in touch with them. They may be in touch with you. They'd be your first point of contact with the centre. Um, so it's, it's someone who will be basically on emails all the time. So if you do have requests and you're requesting something directly to the centre and not to the sales team, they will be there or, or to us, obviously, in head office. They will be the ones who will help you with that. Um, moving on. Next slide, if you don't mind, Diana. OK, just a word about um, the ratios. OK, because that's always a question um, that everybody has. And was one I've actually many years ago, I took I taught in Spain and I took groups over to Ireland for about seven years, actually. And so we it was just from taking a group as a group leader. I know that ratios is something the welfare of the students is something that's really important. Um, you'll see here that. Uh, the ratio staff to student ratios. So for the younger ones, the, the Discover Junior, that's uh, one member of staff to five students on campus, so in the centres, then one member of staff to set to 12 students for excursions or off-site activities. With the older students, so from the 12 to 17 year olds, on campus, it's one to eight and um, for the excursions one to 15 so that obviously and then these this is the, the British Great Council ratios as well nationality mix you'll see here um, the nationality mix as those of you who've sent students before will know we have an amazing nationality mix and, and I'm always amazed by it and I'm also what I think is so satisfying to see is the so many nationalities all communicating in English because that's what they have to do. Um, and I, I always think that's amazing. I always think that's one of the absolute joys of these kind of programs um, to see the students communicating in English because that's their, how they can communicate due to the nationality mix. Um, next slide, Diana, please. So I'm just gonna hand over to Olivia as she was in charge of transfers in 2022 so is the expert and we'll just she'll just run through uh the difference between shared transfers private transferred and unaccompanied minors um so she'll give you just a quick um update on that thank you olivia thank you very much um so uh transfers and a kind of unaccompanied minor uh, transfers the policies haven't changed. Uh, we will be uh, still offering shirt transfers that will be available from 10 to 7 from London Heathrow and like Shima uh, mentioned before that will be the same for Cambridge. Um, we The wait times is up to three hours uh, for students from being met at the um, at the airport, at the arrivals hall, their meeting point, our meeting point until the departure of the transfer to, to the centre. Um, the departures, uh, the students won't be um, won't be at the airport until no more than five hours before their flight. Um, to ensure it is to ensure that they are there on time and they are not going to miss their flights, and everything goes smoothly. As we know, there's a the the, the route from the centre to the airport. That's when we have to make sure that they are not stuffed in traffic or anything. That's why they're going to leave a little bit earlier, but it's not going to be any more than five hours. Um, private transfers, um, as as before, available for arrivals and departures outside the times above, above, or if it's from um, airports such as London City Airport, um, just any other airport in London Heathrow, and if any of the students are interested in having a private transfer within the, the, the time frame that is still available, just have to let us know. And a company minors service um, is something very important and something that we are going to be talking about with our staff uh, multiple, multiple times. Um, students will be met by one of our staff members that will be clearly visible, I think, are bright orange t-shirts and foam fingers 
cannot be missed um, at the airport um, and they won't be. And so our staff will be at the airport to pick up the students and they will have all the information and all the documentation that they need um, to um, handle the sign off with the airline staff. Um, one of uh, something we need to make sure that we're underlining and we're, we're making sure that it is very important. If the student has a UM service booked with the airline, we have to be aware of it. Um, once the student is at the airport and they have booked the UM service, our staff members will have to have a certain documentation and um, things that they need to have signed on paper with them to be able to pick up the student from the airline. Um, as you can imagine, they won't just hand off a student uh, just because we say, oh yeah, this is our student. We have to have that documentation. So it's very important for us to know that this has been booked with the airline and with us um, just for a smooth, uh, smooth sailing of their, of their pickup. Um, if it comes to um, departures, I think it's important that our customers know the students won't be left alone waiting. Uh, they will be with our staff members and they will be, uh, our staff members will be at the airport um, even after they hand off the student to the airline, they will be at the airport just in case uh, last minute the flight gets cancelled or the flight gets delayed, there will always be someone there waiting for the students to make sure that they, uh, the flight took off and they're on the way home happy and safe. So I think it's very important to, to make sure that we know they're going to be um, safe with us and uh, we'll be there to, to, to help with any of it. Thank you. I think that's all for transfers. <laughs> Um, I'll continue with the arrival day. So one of the first days, I don't know if Fizzy you yeah. want to. No, that's fine. Yeah. You go. On. No, that's fine. We, we can do it. We can do it together. On you go. On you go. <laughs> okay. Um, Work. Uh, okay. So arrival day is a very important day. First day of the of the time at the centre. I think we all can imagine it's a day, a very full on day. Um, they might be missing uh, their families, they might be a little bit disoriented, they might be a little bit um, scared of what's happening, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of commotion, but I think it's been very important that our students are very well informed, and that's what we're, is going to happen when they arrive at the centre. They will have someone taking them from the, the coach or their transfer um, to our registration area. Uh, it will vary from centre to centre, but it will be very clearly um, signed. Um, it is very important that all students register on arrival. It is for their information, for our information and for everyone to be happy. Um, they are giving their ID cards, which is something that they have to wear on. I can see that Mark's wearing his lanyard. So just like that, <laughs> all of our students need to wear the lanyards so we can easily identify them and see them uh, um, if needs be. Um, there will be information, they will get the information on the accommodation, so they will find out which house, what room they're in, and uh, later on after the registration they will be taken there by one of the house supervisors. Um, the pocket money form is going to be completed, um, which is very important. The damage deposit is going to be taken. The medical information and English plus options are confirmed. So as Shima mentioned before, if the student hasn't chosen their, uh, their English plus options, um, they will be able to do that on arrival. But we will be double checking that the options that have been put down beforehand are the ones that they are still OK with. And uh, we'll be check double checking if any of the students have any medical information that we need to know about. We will be double checking. Um, on the form that everything's correct and uh, all our staff is aware of it. Um, at the centres we will be asking all the students to be very patient um, it sometimes may take a little while just because there's a lot of things to do, go through but it's very important stuff um, and, and our team uh, will be happy to, to obviously take care of this, um, the students while they're waiting. Um, after the registration, they will be shown to their rooms by house supervisors, as I mentioned before, and they will let them know what the rest of the day will look like. It may be, depending on when they arrive, it may be a meal, then a walking tour, then activities, 
or walking to meal activities. Basically, all these three things will happen. It's just depending on what time they arrive, it will be a variation of those. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Livia. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, that's, we just want to make sure, or oh, I think what's really important is that that first day when somebody arrives, they know what's going on. They know what they, they feel, they, they feel secure. They know where they're sleeping. I think that's really important. They know where they're going to sleep. They know what they're going to do. So we will be reiterating again and again, what happens, what's the structure of the first day and also the first full day. Um, so what will happen on the first full day is that they'll have their placement test. So they'll have a written test. And then everybody has an individual speaking test um, before they're put into classes. Um, they'll also have a welcome talk from the centre manager. Um, and so he will explain, give an overview of the centre, how it works, times of meals, times of activities. This also is reiterated every morning what time everything happens what's happening that day but just on the first day as well what time they're going to do things we'll also they'll also be given a copy of their program when they arrive um, along with the welcome pack so that they can see what is going to what's happening so people have it they have it in their hands they know what's going to happen um, when they're in their houses they will also have an induction with their house supervisor who will explain to them waking up times what time the house meeting is in the evening, why we have the house meeting, because I think it's always good to explain why we're doing things so that people can see the reason for it. We're not just doing it for the sake of doing it. So they have the house meeting to make sure everybody's in the house, what time lights are out in the evenings, um, what to do on excursion days, all that kind of information. They will also be given a tour. This may be the first day or on arrival day, a tour of the centre at so the orientation. Everyone is given a map as well because that's another thing, people do feel so disorientated. So they know where they're going, they know where to find the, the dining room, they know where to find the main office, they know who to speak to for this problem or that problem if they've got questions. Um, and also on the first day, they will have an evening activity with either the new students who've arrived or people who have still, if it's not the first week, with students who have already been in the school or the centre, sorry, for um, a week or a week or so, so that they meet people who are already there. So everybody mixes. Uh, next slide, I think this is yours anyway, actually, Diana. I'll hand over to you. Yes, thank you. Um, well, the academic programme, so what happens after the registration, after the first day, after they have been well jumped in there, they have settled in their rooms and they know where things are. Uh, in, as you know, a day, a typical day is, uh, a typical morning is divided into two sessions, two 90 minute sessions for us, the academic team. In the first uh, academic session, you're gonna have the placement test that is uh, mentioned already. It's a double test, it's a written test and a speaking test as well, because we want to make sure we assess uh, both sides of, let's say, of the, um, of the skills. And after that, they're gonna have an induction at the program. I think the important part of the nice and interesting part starts on day two for our sake for the academic uh, program, where they're going to have the first lesson, which is going to be an introduction to the class, to the school and to the topic of the week. As you know, we each week has a different topic and all groups, regardless of their level, will be dealing with the same uh, topic in class. Of course, with variations according to their level of proficiency, to their proficiency level in English. One new addition to this uh, 2023 summer is an excursion related lesson. This is something that came in your feedback, in students' feedback, and also in our teachers' feedback. Uh, the need to relate the program, the academic program, to what happens outside the school and what happens inside as well in the, in the social program. So the excursion lesson is going to be a lesson related to what students are going to do during the week, to the places that they are going to visit. This is meant to enrich their experience outside the campus and be able to explore it and take in what they see in their excursions through a different set of eyes, maybe a more informed set of eyes. Uh, day three and a bit of day four are input lessons 
uh, for, for the final project. And then students start working in something that they really enjoy. You probably see some of the uh, pictures in the previous slides where students have been developing their own projects, posters. Some of them were robots last year. Some of them created their own apps or their own uh, gadgets for the future. This is something that they really enjoy doing using all the input, all the language input they have had during the lessons to put it into action, let's say, and create together with their friends, friends from around the world, a project that they can show to either their class, their level classes, or the whole campus. This is something that happened at Friendship because of the size of the, of the campus, they were able to present their projects and create like a fun fair, let's say, of projects on that day that I was very glad uh, to witness. And of course, on day five, we're going to do some revision of what happened during the week, uh, which is a way of creating and empowering, creating empowered learners uh, that can reflect on their own learning as well. So this is more or less in a nutshell what happens on the first week of the academic uh, program. Next slide, Diana. Um, this is something new that we have, uh, we will be using uh, in 2023. It is a student journal, a reflection journal. What for? For reflection, for them to, to be able to take a minute and take in everything that is happening to them, this life experience they are living, not just from an academic point of view, but also from an excursion, from a friendship, from a relationship point of view, relationships with others that they are going to create in the center. Uh, for documenting their experience with us, for um, remembering the places they visited, the food they had, the food they didn't like, and the food they loved. Uh, for skills improvement as well, because when they are writing in a foreign language, um, they are improving their skills, their writing skills when doing so. So this is hopefully for skills improvement as well. And why not for fun to have a souvenir of their experience with us with IH London Young Learners. So this is what the academic program is bringing for us and it's looking like. And of course, it leads into uh, another part of the program, which is the activity side that now my colleague Olivia is going to kindly explain to you. Thank you, Diana. Um, the activity program that you can see in front of you, the overall program that you can see in front of you, um, I know not the best quality, very sorry about that, but it will be, if you talk to any of our staff, you will be able to supply with the programme. Um, that will look similarly, um, however, not the same for every centre. Depending on, a, on which centre um, the students will be attending, um, the full day excursion may be on a different day. Um, so for this one specifically, this is for Cambridge, um, which means they will have full day excursions on Sundays. For Frensham, it will be Saturdays. And for Oxford, it will be Mondays. Um, all centres will have um, a half day excursion on a Thursday, just like we have um already had last year um and wednesday is always arrival day departure day but for all those students that are staying with us um for longer than a week um or two the wednesdays will be the days when they will have all day of activities all day of some sort of um entertainment with our activity leaders so they are not left alone and they're not sitting waiting for something to happen and the next day it will be a day full, filled with activities um so they don't feel um so lost in the center you could say um this specific program is uh, intensive english and uh, i can uh, see my little mistake i'm very sorry about that is <laughs> english intensive on the program um but it's, uh, it's very similar for all our courses. Um, the only difference is instead of the English in, uh, intensive English classes in the afternoon, if it's English plus, that's when they will have the professional coaching classes. So between two and 3.30. Um, for Discover students, that will be either a half day excursion instead, or it will be just activities from, uh, from two till, till um, about 5.35, depending on center. Um, most of these, um, nothing else will really change. Um, the lunch times or breakfast time might be slightly different, just um, varying from centre to centre, but it will be uh, more or less within those um, timeframes that we've included in this. Um, 
full day excursions, half day excursions, they will be varying as well uh, from centre to centre. So the destinations will, it will be um, places like London, Oxford, Cambridge, um, Winchester, Windsor for half day excursions. Um, and again, Cambridge or Oxford, depending on the centre. Yeah. Um, I think I'll uh, hand over to Fizzy right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. OK, this is not about what it, more what the students will get out of the excursions rather than the excursions that they are going on, um, because I think some of you are, or, or are familiar with the excursions that they'll take. And also that's information that we can easily send you. But I think what's important is, and what I would want to know, I think if I was in your position is, first of all, the welfare of the students when they're on an excursion. So the ratios for excursions, so staff to students is for the eight to the 11 year olds, the little ones, the juniors, is one member of staff to every 12 students and also for the older ones, the 12 to 17 year olds, it's one um, member of staff to 15 students. Um, and obviously we will make sure that everybody, before they go on an excursion, they know the emergency phone number, they know who to ring, they know who they will be in their groups, they will have their activity leader, they know who their activity leader is. They will also, as Diana said, have been given, um, they'll have had their, class on the ex on where they're going prior to going so they'll know where they're going what to expect um, and then as, as Diana said so there are the educational aim of the excursion so they're linked to their classes which I think is really important so that it's not um, the excursion isn't sort of taken out of out of context um, and they can relate it back to what they've been learning in class and also they can write about it in their journals as well um, so as she said, they will have a lesson on it and then they follow up afterwards. Um, in terms of leading the excursions, um, all the excursions have been tried and tested by us before beforehand. Um, so the packs that are written for the activity leaders are practical information because we've done the excursions basically. Um, and all the activity leaders will have been fully briefed on, the on all the excursions that they'll be leading and we'll have very comprehensive excursion packs with all the relevant information about where they're going to and what will what will be oh hang on two secs <laughs> and i'm finished anyway and what they're going to be seeing okay we can move on we can move on we can move on right group leaders um this is a question we often get asked about what what to expect if you come as a group leader as i know some of you do or that you have group leaders who come with groups but through you so each group leader or we will send you the group leader handbook prior to the arrival okay and we ask you and the group leaders to please read this before um coming over with the group it's just really important i mean for some of some people are practiced group leaders they've done it for years and years and years they know what to expect they know what it's like but it's always handy to have a reminder and for new group leaders it's it's really useful to have a guide to follow so um it's just what to expect from from um from being a group leader so some of the things that are included in the handbook are of the school rules so the rules that students have to follow when they're in the center um our safeguarding policy also very very important safeguarding as i keep saying is of utmost importance in the centers and we ask group leaders to read that. We'll also, you'll also have useful information about the centre that you're in, so useful phone numbers, who to contact, and also a who's who guide of who is in the centre you are or the group leader is going to. So they know prior to arrival who is who in the centre. Um, and also for safety and security reasons, the group leader has responsibilities and there is a code of conduct that they would expect everyone to follow. Um, the responsibility, uh, next slide, please, Diana. Okay, just a sample of some of the group leader responsibilities. I mean, I'm probably stating the obvious, but I just wanted to highlight a few of the things. Obviously, going with students on all excursions and all offsite activities. They're not part of the ratios with staff, but it is really important that they accompany their students. Um, 
talking to your students as a group leader every day to check their, on their welfare, you know, to make sure they're OK. They're probably more likely to tell you as a group leader things that they perhaps might not tell the staff or they feel embarrassed to talk about in English, possibly. Um, Another group leader responsibility is letting the centre staff know if their students do have any problems with lessons, with rooms, with activities, so that we can act on it as soon as possible. Um, I mean, that's what it's all about. Not to, you know, the, the, the quicker we know, the quicker it can be acted on. Um, also, accompanying students to medical appointments and organising medical expenses and the insurance payments, ETC. And also to help students to keep their valuables safe, to recommend what they do. As I said before, we really recommend um, students um, hand in their pocket money. We have a pocket money form. Everything's written down on that, not to leave it in the rooms. The rooms aren't locked. We don't lock the rooms. Um, that's for a safeguarding issue, in fact. Um, so just that, just to advise students and basically be, if there's something that the, the group is worried about, come into the centre staff telling them about that. So that's group leaders. And I think actually that from um, from our side, uh, just a, just a, a, an overview, a couple of, of a few things that we thought that would be of interest for you guys about the programmes. But I'm, I'm looking at the Q&A's and we have one or two questions there. I think what we'll do, Shima, is that you'll read them out, because I'm sure yeah. if one of you has asked a question, it's probably all of you are thinking the same thing. So she will, yeah. will answer them, maybe some, depending on what it is, we'll all try and do our best to answer your questions. Should we run out of time, what we'll do is we'll take the questions that we haven't been able to answer from the chat and we'll send it to everybody. And as Shima said, we're recording this, we'll send you that, we'll send you the presentation at the end as well with all the information. And what we'll try and do is all the questions with the answers. So you've got it all there. Um, I hope that's okay with everybody. Um, Shima, shall we crack on? Yeah, with this sure. Question? Thanks, Busy. So the first question was, how much is the damage deposit? So that's fifty pounds or fifty euros, and that's for all the centres: Frensham, Cambridge, and Oxford. Um, Diana, what speaking exam will be taken as part of the intensive English course? Hi. Uh, yes, we'll be taking lingua skill from which is an accredited exam by um, a Cambridge University Press. It is a speaking exam. And can students who are taking an English plus course, for example, um, take just the exam if they wanted? Or no, Not really. We advise the students take the preparation course, especially because of the each exam has its own format. Mm -hmm. And it's important for students to be familiar with the format before they attempt an exam in order to best display their their proficiency level so uh we would advise to either choose one program or the other okay thank you um fizzy will we be sharing the centers with any other schools um we will be sharing <laughs> um oxford we will but not with another school that's doing english language programs i think there's a music camp and a maths camp going on same as other years cambridge there is in fact another um, as far as we know, there is another company that's running that have um, run their courses there for the last 30 years, but it's a very small outfit. I think they have about 100 students and they do it for July. So, yes. Thank you. Um, Olivia, uh, in Frencham, how many students share one bathroom? Um, I'd say on average, we'd say one to five uh, is the ratio. So five students per bathroom. That's the average, though, so each house will be um, may vary. Yeah, it tends okay. to vary, doesn't it? And how will the laundry be done? Do students need to wash their own clothes? Is it once a week? If you can just give a bit more information um, about that, please. So it's all um, it's all up to each centre because it will be varying um, a little bit. Um, what I can say for sure is how supervisors will have all the information and will pass it on to the students when they arrive. But we will be there to to help them. So it's we're not going to leave the students to do their own washing in case they don't know how to wash it and shrink all their clothes. Um, we'll be there to help them. And um, most likely we will have um, tokens that they will have to take from our house supervisor or welfare manager to use the washing uh, facilities. 
Cool. Thank you very much. Um, regarding meals, so we can cater to most dietary requirements. We would just need to know in advance. Um, but one of the main questions, which has been quite popular, is what kind of snacks will be offered and will there be snacks available in between meals for students at the centres? That actually depends on centre, uh, on the centre. In Oxford, they have a break. Um, and the, during the break, they'll get biscuits and they get juice. In Cambridge, I think they don't, but the, I mean, the meals at the centre are pretty, I'm trying to think of a word that I was going to say full on, but they're not full on. There is a lot of food. So it's a, a question of, I mean, people will get breakfast, then they'll, their lunch and then the dinner. So just stocking up at the meals. So we and can we offer like halal food, vegan? We can cater. We can to it's, as long as we're not, we know in advance, then we can. Perfect. Um, there's a question: If we have a request for the children with special medical requests, um, do we have any necessary additional documents that they need to complete? Or it depends what the condition is. But once again, advance warning if we know what it is and if they need if it's for example getting prescriptions or getting repeat prescriptions obviously we need um information about that um and how we'd get them and so i mean the thing is it's it as with everything if we know in advance then it's something that we can look into um, yeah. but it's always best to check with the sales team and they can check with us prior just in case there is for some reason we're unable to but just to to be to know in advance exactly yeah. what it is. That's all I would say. So there's no surprises basically. Yeah. Also, I just want to add a thing here. So once you guys have emailed us the booking, you will get a link for a form that you need to complete. And one of the forms there is a medical form. So that's where you will provide us with all the relevant details. And as Olivia mentioned earlier, they will, the staff at the center on the arrival day, they will just double check and triple check, make sure that everything is correct. So. Perfect. Thank you. And one of the other questions was, what's the capacity for each centre per week? OK, so Frencham and Cambridge, 150 on average. Oxford, my mind's gone completely blank. Let it's me think. It's 250. <laughs> Can it be 350, I think? 350. Yeah, we yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, what is the minimum age for individual students for Cambridge Centre? So that would be 12. Um, one of the questions is, are students grouped by age in a centre? So how do we group them in terms of classes and the activities? Well, in terms of, in terms of classes, we, book, uh, we um, class them first uh, by age and by level. That is, uh, those are our two uh, parameters that we use first. Of course, we consider the level, but we cannot, we don't have a 12 year old mixing with a 17 year old. Where, where the difference in age is big, we offer either a younger class of the same level or a even like a, another class with a higher level that in, and the teacher is completely aware that they need to integrate and uh, that student, but we don't have a big age grab in, in the classes. And as regards activities, Olivia? Um, I would say quite similar. Um, we will be obviously uh, taking into consideration not to mix. 12 year old with a 17 year old that's a, that would be a safeguarding issue um so we will make sure <laughs> that the the uh, groups are mixed but not um to too big of an extent and obviously will be activities will be taking into consideration what they will be doing is what would be appropriate for their age or would be fun for them <laughs> Okay, perfect. And um, we have a question regarding Cambridge, one bathroom per five rooms. Um, so in Cambridge, we actually have twin on single ensuite rooms. So it would just be either two sharing or a single um, ensuite room. And then we have, if student wants to buy any extra food during the breaks, is that possible? There is the tuck shop. Okay. Yeah. Where they can buy food. And is that in every centre, sorry? Yeah? Yes. Perfect. Um, under what conditions can a child in a wheelchair be registered? So can we accept children? 
Um, yes, I need, yeah, I, they all have um, disabled facilities in the schools um, and they should all have disabled showers and that, those kind of facilities. Um, it would depend on the centre. If someone was interested, then it would be like a special request and we can make, see which would be the most appropriate centre for, for that student. We could look into it for them. Okay, perfect. Um, do they get free water throughout the day at the centres? Is there any possibility to buy mineral water if required nearby or on campus? The tap water, I don't know. I mean, I know for some people are that tap water is not their thing, but the tap water is absolutely fine to drink in all three centres. You would be able to buy mineral water. French would be trickier because there isn't a shop nearby I mean, they can't, they could, it would make it, I mean, it's possible to buy it, yes. Okay, and um, another question we have is, um, sometimes in the past, students age 14 plus were, are, have been able to um, spend some time, like go off campus to summer town, will this be possible in 2023? Well, if they're, they would need to go with an, a, an activity leader, they wouldn't go on their own, no. Okay. And that's um, your house supervisor. Okay. Thank you. And is it possible for students to go on additional excursions? If, um, for example, they're staying for two weeks or three weeks? So additional excursions, I would say that would be the optional excursions that could happen depending on availability and interest um, at the centre. Uh, that would be on the arrival departure day, so Wednesdays will have um, some active um, excursions, sorry, um, to offer. And um, beforehand, I believe a week before, there will be um, an information about what's going to happen. And if you're interested, you will have to sign up for that one, yeah. Okay, and autism child, can they be registered in one of our camps? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, I keep repeating myself, but the more information that we have, obviously, the easier it is so that yeah. we know what would help the child or the student, um, basically, but yes. I think that's it. So um, thank you so much again, guys, for attending. Thank you to the team for obviously um, running this webinar as well. We are looking forward to summer 2023, as I'm we sure are, you are. are um and yeah just again thank you all for obviously your partnership you know for your support we really appreciate it and if you do have any questions or you need anything you're more than welcome to contact your sales manager or feel free to um, get in touch at sales at ihlondon.com um, as Fizzy mentioned we will be sharing this um, recording we'll be sharing the powerpoint presentation and we'll be sharing the q a's as well and yeah Good luck and hopefully see you guys soon and see your students yeah, exactly. soon. Exactly. Well. See you in the summer. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.